Welcome to the Swisspreneur Show, a podcast about startup stories and hands-on learnings from experienced entrepreneurs. My name is Sylvan, and I will be your host. Today, we're back in Rappersville with Jutta Yertrum. As you already heard in the first episode, she built her startup company Twist Out and sold already more than 1 million pieces. Today, we cover topics of self-funding your startup company, such as the start of the business, her salary as a founder, and also sales and marketing hacks for self-financed businesses. As always, you can find additional content on our social media channels, so make sure to follow us there. If you love books and pursuing new ideas, but feel like you don't have the time, I have just what you need. I highly recommend the Blinkist app. Blinkist is the only app that takes the best key takeaways from thousands of non-fiction books and condenses them down into 15 minutes so you can read or listen to them wherever you are. Right now, Blinkist has a special offer just for our audience. Just go to www.blinkist.com forward slash Swisspreneur, try it free for seven days and save 25% of your new subscription. That's Blinkist spelled B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T dot com forward slash Swisspreneur to start your free seven day trial and you also save 25% off, but only when you sign up today at Blinkist.com slash Swisspreneur. Jutta, welcome back to the second episode of Swisspreneur. It's great to have you here again. Thank you. Today, we're going to talk about how to build a bootstrapped business in a successful way. And I think we obviously have to start at your company structure. You are completely financed with your own money and the money of your parents to a certain degree. Why did you choose to not take on any external investors? It was very important for me to build up my company for my own. Uh, I wanted to be independent, mm -hmm. so uh, and I didn't take any money from from my fam. I mean, from my family, from my husband or whatever, right. and um, he wouldn't have gave me any money anyhow. So, uh, and I took my own money and I invested some money from my parents to start, but um, I mean, it was a deal between my mother and 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 Trista. I mean, it's not like she's very business minded. So it's not like, yeah, yeah, daughter, sure, yeah, I will give you the money. How much do you need? She said, how much do you need for what is it for? And uh, you have to pay interest. I mean, right. I did. I mean, this is really, I mean, it was a deal. It's mm -hmm. not like, yeah. It's not the welfare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how did you then convince your mom? Because she seems to be very business driven and asked for what, what you need the money for. She was asking for interest. What sort of business case or proposal did he make to her that she actually said, yes, I'm going to give you some money? I mean, money. I didn't have to convince my parents anymore because they liked the product and just said, okay, try it, give them a try. So it was clear that I, they don't give me the money just for, I don't know, just do something with it. It was, she wanted to know, okay, for what is it for? And uh, I said, okay, I need a production. I have the company build up and all that stuff so it was okay and um, actually I took twice a second time money from my parents because after that show in Germany the TV show was mm -hmm. never on air I wanted to to have a, a nice stock and for that I needed right. more money and I asked again and she gave it to me and I already repaid everything okay so it was very important for me as well, as, as, as soon the, the cash flow and as soon the, the money was on the bank account, mm -hmm. I, I repaid my parents. Right. So basically, don't ask for more money if you no, haven't already no, repaid never. your first. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's exactly the point. So it was very important for me um, that I can start without any debits and uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And not having any external investors on board also can have some drawbacks. It basically can make you slower. You can invest less money in marketing, for example. Did you experience any of these, these drawbacks? It makes you definitely slower, of course. Uh, but 
I really think, I don't know, it depends what you do. In my case, it is, it was perfect. It was very important for me to do my own steps for my own, mm -hmm. really for my own. own. So even when somebody said, yeah, but you should do it like this or dance about, it's my business. Right. I want to do it. Why was that so important to you? I don't, because I'm, I'm, maybe I'm, uh, I am a little bit defiant. I am. I always was, and I still am. And, uh, and I'm still, yeah, I'm still, I, I'm defiant, yeah. I don't know, it's, it's my own thing. It's my, my, it's something just for me, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just for my own, mm -hmm. just for no special reason, actually. Okay. And was there any certain moment, looking now back in time, where you wish you had more more money available than you actually had? Or was that never really an issue because you went your own way and just took it as it, as it came? I took it as it came. It was okay. I always had money, actually. I'm, I'm uh, sh sure, I mean, then you, you start counting, okay? You have orders here, okay, you get the money. Yeah, with the cash flow, it's always, it's always a problem. I always had the money. It was, the company was, yeah, was always fine. You know, don't forget I'm Swabian, huh? Maybe it makes more sense for you. I don't know, you, you know the Swabians, how it works? It's like the Scottish people. Okay. Okay, so I never spent money I don't have. Right. Never. So I really count. I always, um, I'm very kind of, yeah, very sparsam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Swabians are, yeah, they watch. Um, that money. also basically is your business philosophy. So you're really focused on not having debt or too much debt in, in, in yes. building a company. Yes, which is okay. But if you want to grow, I mean, you have to do the next step and say, okay, sure. Yeah, just go out and risk something. I mean, I, I yeah, I don't risk money. That's mm -hmm. that's right. I risk the money I have, but I will never risk money I, I, I'm, I'm not having. I, I think risk is also a very important part here because you are self-funded, self-financed. So you basically have money at stake. How do you deal with that sort of risk or also maybe a, a sort of a fear of failure if there's any? How do you cope with that risk? The only fear of failure is uh, to lose the money. But that's what I said at the beginning is, uh, okay, I said, okay, this is the money I have mm -hmm. and this is the money I spent. If the money is gone, it's gone. Yeah. It's fine for me. I tried it. It's okay. But you can't, at the end, you have, you have to, to check your cash flow. You have to check your debits. You have to check your bank, bank account. I mean, of course. It's very, very important, I mean. Another important aspect is also the founder's salary, basically. Until today, you still don't take any salary out of the company. Yeah. Why not? I don't pay me a salary. I could pay me a salary. Mm -hmm. The company could pay me a salary. But still, you don't. I don't, yeah, because then I... I th then I would have less cash flow. And then... I would be limited in doing my business. So I'm using actually my salary for my, for my security stock. The, the other thing is if you're working with major customers, it's, 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 a, it's a big responsibility. Mm -hmm. So what I do, I, 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 I take care of a, of a good uh, safety stock. So I can, I can create a trust in me as a startup. I mean, it's always, it's always uh, a little bit difficult for the, for the big ones working with startups. Right. But I have the stock. And um, even if you have a drugstore, I mean, they call me and they say, okay, within six days, you have to deliver. Yeah. So. You need to have some available cash to then... I, I, I need to have a warehouse which is full or even full. I mean, yeah, I do have uh, quite a big warehouse. And 
although you mentioned that your husband was not a big support during the Shark Tank episode when you actually called him for advice, <laughs> I'm sure that he was uh, or still is a very strong supporter of, of your business and also supports you in, in probably any way he can. Can you also talk about, about your setup that you have? Because I think, you know, having a partner that is doing a, a startup, his or her own company, where you are facing more risk and it could also not work out or having ups and downs. How, do, how does the partner cope with that and how can a partner support you in a, in a good way? My husband, he didn't believe in my business. He didn't? No, he didn't. Why not? Just because he didn't. He said, well, this is not working. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I tried it. I, I was defiant again. I said, you know what? I, I, I'll do it. I'm going to prove you wrong. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> that's what I did. But that's a, a tough challenge to face. I mean, if even your own husband says, hey, this is not yeah, going to but work. We, yeah, but we are married since 25 years. I mean, this is fine for us. I mean, right. I can handle that without any problems. It's and even a more motivation for you yes. to improve him wrong. Uh, okay. Right. <laughs> got it. So is there any support that that you got from him where he yes, was... Yes, definitely. I mean, unfortunately, he's not paying me a salary either. Huh? Right. So, but he's paying the bills. So for me, it's very comfortable so I can handle and, and build up my company the way I want to. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, a, this is a very, this is, for me, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, I mean, after, after half a year, I mean, he changed his mind. Yeah, yeah of You proved him wrong. I pr yes, I proved him wrong. And he gives me support if I have IT problems, if I have contracts to read, to double check mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I mean, no, he's here. When I'm asking him, he's helping me out. I mean, this is clear. Of course. Today, yes. <laughs> but not in the early days. <laughs> Still, I can also imagine that, you know, you going through these ups and downs of entrepreneurship, basically, and also facing challenges with the TV show and you have a huge stock that is not selling because the show is not airing, for example, that this can also put some pressure on your relationship or on the, on the finances of, of, a, of a couple or of a family. Did you have any big challenge that you had to face or? Yes, of course, because I had a very good salary before. Huh? Right. I mean, uh, this is money. It's yeah, just not there anymore. It's not, it's not here anymore. Right. That's the easiest thing. Yeah. So you, you also need to have a certain sort of buy in of your husband to then say, yeah, it's okay that you sort of don't take that salary anymore. and follow your own yeah he said i mean he says of course okay why don't you pay you a salary right. pay you a salary mm -hmm. no no yeah but we could this and that no so yeah <laughs> not not i mean i i still have a little bit of time so of course I, I i have to do it in my way i have to do it with yeah no no i'm not paying me a salary and that's okay but then i guess there are certain compromises that you have yes to sure. take, right yes of course yeah. Do you have a good example for one? Like maybe... A lot of examples. I mean, it's always, I mean, it's like when you're married, I mean, so talking about money, it's, 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 always, it's always here. So, okay, I don't earn any money. I only need money. I don't need a lot of money, I have to say, mm -hmm. but I need money and um, my salary is missing. I mean, a lot of things. I don't know if you go on vacation, if you... And you have, the other thing is you have a standard. I mean, you have your monthly bills. You have that. If I'm working or not working. They don't I mean, care what you no, do. They, they don't come care in anyway. if I have a salary or not. And I mean, you have, after all these years, I mean, you have you have a standard and, and you, you have your bills. And yeah, and now he's the one who's um, taking care of it. Yeah. I think this is also very inspiring, you know, because if people want to start their own companies and they, they are in a relationship, they have a partner, or are you married as you are, I can imagine that this will be a, co a topic that you have to, to face and address and openly and honestly discuss with each other to, to find Absolutely. a good, good solution Absolutely. to make it work. And I mean, 
that's we had that they didn't show it uh, in in the shock tank but um, what they said oh this is great you do it a hundred percent you quit your job and I said yeah but I mean if you have to pay your money I, I can do it because of my husband sure. but or I know a lot of startups, I mean, if you have to pay your monthly rent and you, yeah, you just can't say, okay, I quit my, 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 my safe job Absolutely. just for, I don't know, trying to build up a startup. Yeah. Yeah. So, and if you start with a 20 or 30 or 40 percent, this is okay. I mean, even for me, for Twistart, it would have been okay, but it right. would ha wouldn't have been okay for my, for my job I did in the castle. I mean... Yeah. Another part is you don't have any employees. So it's just, as we said earlier in the first episode, it's just a one woman show, basically. Me, myself you. and I. And then you basically have to get all the tasks done that are at hand. And I can imagine this can be pretty difficult to decide where you invest your time and also learn. You need to be very good at learning how to prioritize things. So how do you decide where you spend your time and what you actually want to get done, what you maybe outsource and what shouldn't be done at all. Do you have any recommendations how you spend your time? Okay, I work 24 seven. I work a lot at night. Why is that? Just because your natural I'm, rhythm? I'm, or... I'm quite creative. After, okay. after 10 p.m. I'm, it's my time. Cool. And I don't... I, I don't ask me this question. I mean, I have to do it right. and I'll do it. It's the same with, with the, with the money-wise. I mean, okay, I have support. I have support with IT, accounting, accounting questions. Yeah. I mean, I do my accounting for my own. Wow. Um, and I learned it from zero. I mean, <laughs> when I say zero, I mean zero, mm -hmm. really zero. I, I didn't have a clue. I, and I had a good friend of mine, she, she was sitting with me and she explained everything a hundred times. I don't know. And today now it's clear for me. And I had somebody in Germany for, for the German tax, for the German accounting. And, but in the meanwhile, yeah, I'm doing it for my own as well. So I don't know. Just I learn a lot. So I know it was as well good at the pitch uh, at the shark tank because you know you know exactly what's going on in your company when right. you do your own accounting. Um, but that the idea is, of course, that you do out, I will outsource them as soon, I don't know, as soon I'm ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's the accounting, it's the it's, uh, office, it's the, the invoices, it's, it's like, yeah, I do everything, yeah. You know, there are so many tasks that sort of follow your sale of a product that many people don't see when they just have the customer's perspective, right? Yeah. And you just have to get them done all, basically yes. all of them. I just, yeah, I just start and I just do it and I see what I have to do. And sometimes I work until in the morning at two or three o'clock and I work on Saturday and Sunday, but I don't mind. This is the good thing. I, I really, I don't mind. Mm -hmm. I like, I like, I like the idea of, of, living and working and 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 I love what I do and I don't I never ask me that question actually never I guess that's a good sign then <laughs> <laughs> let's now focus on how you actually make some revenue as a small company um, you are now present in more than 60 stores in Switzerland and more than 3,000 stores in Germany mm -hmm. That is a huge achievement for just a one woman show, basically. You did all of that on your own. And I think that's crazy to bring your product to so many different stores. So can you sort of talk a bit more about how you got your product to these stores and how you negotiated the deals and how it actually happened that you are now present in that many stores? Okay, I start with the Switzerland. I'm working with a distribution partner as a retail partner. And um, this works quite well. I mean, it works. That's fine. Germany, I'm, uh, I, I did almost all stores, almost directly. I started with, yeah, yeah, you take your phone, you, t you write an email and say, okay, this is me, this is my product. Um, and I got, so the, the first, you know, Manufactum, 
I got Manufactum was more or less the first store, which was perfect, perfect name dropper as well. Huh? And um, and if you start with one, it's just, I don't know, it's just they were interested in, in the product. And the good thing is, as soon they ask for samples, I know, okay, when I'm already with, when I'm, when I'm at that point, they are asking for samples, mm -hmm. I have 80% of, of, of the deal. Yeah, nice. yeah, that works. DM was different. The drugstore, they had um, a startup contest. Oh, nice. It was a startup contest, contest actually. So uh, I applied and I was selected. Mm -hmm. And we were 20 startups and they were sending us in a crowdfunding, which was very special. And they said, okay, the first three startups with the most supporters get listed at DM. Well, so you want to make sure that you're part of these top three. Of course, you try. <laughs> okay. At the, I ended up at seventh place. But still, I was so convinced that DM would be the right selling place for Twist Out. Mm -hmm. So I called them after two weeks later, after right. the crowdfunding, and I was asking if I still have a chance, even with my seventh place. And uh, they were interested, and uh, they ordered a few weeks later for all 2,000 stores. Wow. And I had my stock. From the TV shows when oh, I was perfect. Oh, the, now the, there was yeah, helpful. Yeah, that was perfect. So I was ready. And this is the other thing, huh? And at, at the end, it was like Twist Out was the first product who was listed, who was in the stores from the whole crowdfunding, even the first three. Mm -hmm. They're still, I guess, I guess at the moment there's one in the store at the moment or two. And this is because I was ready. I mean, right. I had I had the product. I knew what to do. I said, "Yeah, well, you order. I, I can deliver. ship tomorrow." <laughs> yeah, well, I deliver, no problem. Yeah, and that was my advantage. So you were ready at the right time, basically. I was definitely, and I asked again. I mean, this is something. Yeah, how do you do that? And this is I said, you have always a no. You always start with a no, mm -hmm. but then you have to ask. And just re-ask, um, yeah. What do you ask them then specifically when they tell you no at first? What do you ask them? Oh, I have a lot of uh, major customers. I, I applied two, three times. Mm -hmm. Of course. I mean, then you try it again. But what If they say no, you ask why. Right. And uh, that's it. And you learn out, out of that. And the next time you apply, you I don't know if you have to change something. Okay, I mean, I grew huh? and, uh, 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 with my awards and with all my stuff and the people talk about that twist out and it's totally different today. It's much, much easier, right. much, much easier. I think this is also a very big matter of trust that they trust you and like your product, right? And that I also think that you can actually deliver what was very helpful for you in terms of building trust with the big suppliers? Obviously, publicity seems to help. So if you're on TV, that's probably a boost in, in confidence and in trust. What else was, was helping you in order to sort of fill the gap, the lack of trust that they might have in the beginning? What works now with the dr drugstore, I mean, is that the name dropper always works. When, okay. when, when I apply for a new retailer and I tell them, okay, I'm already in, I don't know where, and said, okay, when they buy you, there must be some, it works. So, so first is, big reference yeah, clients. Yeah, the big reference, right. The name dropper, I always say my name droppers, yeah. yeah. So it's not too much about PR or publicity. Of course, that also helps, but that's not no, a game it, changer. It, uh, no, at the end, it's, it's, it's definitely the product as well. Huh? Okay. I mean, it's, it's different. I mean, I have, uh, I'm the only product like this. I mean, yeah. this is my USP. It's the, as well, of course, not, what I always do, I start always with the sustainability and plastic free. Mm -hmm. This is my, these are my first words. It's right. not my, my drain stick and my wooden whatever. It's sustainability, plastic free, zero waste, whatever. And everybody's talking about that. 
the clients, they want to have products like mine. Mm -hmm. And it works. And I mean, this is a, this is a definitely a sales aspect. Yeah. So you really need to know how to frame your product because I mean, as sure. you said, you could look yeah. at it from that's just a wooden stick, yeah, sure. but you pack it as the way, hey, this is sustainable, zero waste. And Absolutely. I think this is a very important perspective to think about the USP and match them to the focus of the of the sort of the buyers that you want to sell your product to. I, and you know what I what I do as well. I started that after a year. I don't know. It was yeah. At the beginning, I I have a video from the product made in a, a very nice video. Mm -hmm. I mean, with my with my drain and with <laughs> fake hair and I don't know what. And then I started to send out the original customer videos, the really the the disgusting videos, mm -hmm. and that works perfect. Even better than the very polished video. Yeah, wow. much much better, much better. It's it's really disgusting, but it works. So the people say, okay, this works. Let's right. see, yeah. I can it's imagine. not an agency. It's not somebody who like, yes. like yeah. It works. It's honest, authentic. It's honest. Yeah, right. Coming back to authentic, your values, yeah. basically. I have one video on Facebook. Uh, a friend of mine, she was cleaning up a, a, a flat mm -hmm. and she was making a video with my twist out. And she was like, mm, and wow. Twist out, so geil. She said something in, in yeah. Schweizerdeutsch. I took that video, I put it on Facebook, uh, and I had uh, 30,000 reviews. Wow. Nice. Just because of that disgusting hair thing. Yeah. It's a simple product, it works, and you have the social proof, sort of. And I guess that's uh, very authentic and closes that gap of, of trust. It is very important to be authentic. Mm -hmm. And this is what works actually today, even in business, even with the big ones, even with the big retailers, with the major customers, with the, this is be authentic, be who you are. We also talked about the importance of your first big reference client. You closed yours by just calling them and, yes. and talking <laughs> about the product, basically. <laughs> what did you exactly uh, tell them that they then got interested in you? Do you remember? <clears throat> no, at the beginning, it's the, 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 I, I mean, I have like, I applied with the email, and I have my nice sheets and whatever, and uh, and I sent the samples, and what do I tell? I said, yeah, something new, something, what I said, sustainable, something, my USPs, mm -hmm. and um, it worked. It worked with the... Uh, the first stores, I mean, it all organic, side of organic direction. Right. So, um, so, yeah, no, so I love it. You basically also looked for your first niche, if I can frame that correctly. So you yeah, started yeah, with the organic I stores. With the, well, yeah, I started with the organic stores and with the do-it-yourself stores, okay. uh, uh, which I, in my opinion, that's not the right place for twist out. Mm -hmm. Uh, but still, I do have my stores in, in, in Germany. I'm definitely the, the best place for Twist Out is being, I always say, between butter and milk and between makeup and, and muesli. Uh, this is something you buy just in between. You say, okay, oh, this is my, I, I want to try that out. Right. And I just take it. It's, yeah, I'm perfect in, in food stores and in drug stores. Mm -hmm. A micro would be nice as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Hopefully one day. Maybe. Have you also thought about doing anything in regards of teleshopping, for example? Yes. Um, the problem with this, my product, it's too, too cheap, okay. actually. So they, they love to start up from, from 20 francs on. So okay. uh, what we can do that we do a double packaging or sure. whatever kind of that. So we will see, yeah, we, we, we talked about that. You know, there's a fantastic movie, it's called Joy. Maybe you've watched it. 
it's about a kick-ass female entrepreneur. And for me, I see so many parallels to you, basically. You're no. already the second one who's telling you that. <laughs> I have uh, somebody who is working for the Handelsstaat in Zurich, and he always says, you are like that, Shoy. You are, yeah. A kick-ass female yeah. entrepreneur. Yeah. Just the teleshopping part is missing. That's why I actually thought, yeah, okay. No, but we are, we are working on that. <laughs> cool. Yeah, we are working on that. And, you know, being a solo founder, a one-person company can also be a drawback because people could think, is this company even professional? Can they actually deliver? And I think also your biggest retailer, DM, was very surprised when they actually saw, hey, are you actually just a one-person company? Can you talk us more about how you actually handled that and how the situation occurred? It was, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I applied and for the listing, I had to fill out all these documents. Mm -hmm. And of course, like, yeah, the orders, the accounting, the, so all the, the different departments you usually have in an office. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and I was always, I always did that copy paste. Okay, your time, my phone number, my email. Right. And so they had one email, I don't know, eight times. Mm -hmm. And he called me and he said, I just want to double check. So I have only one email and one phone number. I said, yes, that's right, because it's just me. And he said, yeah, you are responsible for, for, the, for the order and for the, for the accounting and for, for invoicing. And I said, yes, yes, it's Everything. all me. Logistic, yeah, it's me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and he was really surprised. And he said, oh, it's the first time I have that here in my career. And at the first moment, I actually liked it, but but if you think about it, it's it's not a, it's not good. It's negative. I mean, it's negative for you for your company because that's the problem that the customers, the major customer, the retailers, they think, okay, can she handle that? Right. I mean, for you, it's a huge compliment if they select you and say, hey, they do everything or she does everything that that well that we actually want to buy it. But at the same time, from their perspective, it could also be yeah the negative aspect. Yes. Can that actually work? And I do have, uh, I, I had offers as well, a, a, quite a good one in, in Switzerland. And they said, I, I, we, we want to work with you, mm -hmm. with the distribution. Uh, yeah, with, with, it was a company as well in Switzerland. I said, okay, I'm not working with them and I will not working with them. So there was, uh, yeah, no deal. <laughs> mm -hmm. Again, the gut feeling, Again, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It, but, you know, it's okay. In the first episode, you also talked about the time frame, how long it can actually take from negotiating a deal with a distributor or a, a chain and then actually getting your, your product in there and making the first revenue. Can you walk us through the process? Because I think for many people, this is a bit unknown or they haven't gone through such a process, process themselves. How does it work after you successfully pitched it then you sent them some samples, I guess, or they want to meet you in person. How do you then get your product from the first interest into the store? What's the process there? I would say half a year. Um, it takes about half a year. Yeah, I mean, you start, you apply for it, then they ask for samples, then you have the, the pricing, then you have all the documents for the listing, mm -hmm. then logistic, how does it work? Do I deliver? Do they pick it up? All right. that kind of stuff. Then packaging, packaging displays. How do you how do you uh, how do you sell your product in the store? Mm -hmm. So and when you you have one store, they want to hang it. The other one, okay, it goes into the shelf. The next one, he wants to have a. Uh, a big display the other one wants to have a display with 20 pieces in it the next one i mean it it's it's never the same never mm -hmm. never so now i'm i'm as well it's it's they have about 130 stores in germany it's a it's an organic store um, chain S same thing so i i do now we have to do new displays because they said, I want to have a display, it should be like this and that. I said, okay, I will do it. 
Of course I do. I mean, and it takes quite a long time. Or, or they said, okay, then you have all these vacations in Germany. And Germany is for it, or even here. Then it's okay, then it's summertime. And then, okay, then you have, I don't know, during, during Christmas, nothing happens. I mean, yeah. there's months just goes like that. Then you ask again, oh, we forgot you. Yeah, 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 we do it now, yes. And, and sometimes you have as well that the purchasing department says, okay, we want to have the product in the stores. And then they start to ask the, 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 all, all the stores if they want to have the product in the store. So it's an internal thing which takes quite a long time and... Yeah, but you have to you have to count with six months. Yeah, yeah, it is like that. And now we talked about the early days, how you actually got your first products in these many many stores. How do you do the sales and retail part nowadays? You also mentioned the United States, where you plan to expand to over the next couple months. Mm -hmm. What is your biggest driver? Is it still with retailers that you sell your product to? Do you have other channels in mind? We're already set up. What is your current distribution strategy for Twist Out? Yes, definitely the the, the stores, the 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 the, this, the the major stores, the major customer. This is something which is for me. This is my focus. Mm -hmm. Twist Out would be great. I do have as well um, hotels working with Twist Out. Interesting. Yes, uh, I started applying. Uh, for hotels and it, it worked more or less. I mean, I have hotels uh, working with Twist Out, but this is the point now. I cannot do everything. Right. So I have to choose, okay, do I go this way or do I go that way? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I choose the, the retail focus, uh, to have my focus on the retail. And um, why specifically did you make that focus? Because you have a higher leverage and higher amounts that you could sell through that channel, or no, what the was the decision? The retail thing is, I just wanna, I wanna place my product more or less all over. This mm -hmm. is my target, and I wanna make a brand out of it. Okay. And this is why I have to be in the stores. Right. Yeah. But I, what I said as well, and then the next thing is, I mean to come into a store to get listed is one mm -hmm. thing, but then you have to start working because it's much more important that the clients take your product and go home with your product. Right. This is the point. Coming into a shelf is one thing, but getting out is much more difficult. And how do you get that done? Because you already sold more than 1 million sticks, basically. <laughs> I sold them, yeah, but I I mean, they are somewhere, huh? Right. But this this is exactly the point. I mean, this is marketing. Mm -hmm. Then you don't have the money for the marketing. This is one right. thing. If I would have money, now at 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 that point, I would take a lot of money just for marketing. What would you do with that money? Like, if I give you one million now, what would you do with that money? I would go on TV <laughs> for a million, maybe. I mean, yeah, probably could, not no, yet. No, no, not yet. No. Yeah. So it would be in newspaper articles and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's the reason why I do a lot of contests with all these awards, just mm -hmm. that the people talk about and that I can say, listen, and it's very nice as well. It's interesting. I mean, the Cream Product Award, I was selected last year. If you have, if you have the, the, the logo on the packaging, it's totally different. It works. I mean, the people, oh, okay, Green Product Award. And then I had my, my, my German Innovation Award. I was, uh, yeah, th this was quite good. Mm -hmm. And now the next step is uh, I applied for the eco design in Germany. And I hope, I really do hope that I can make it. That would be great. I mean, this is marketing. So, and that's what I said to the startup, just go out, do all these contests, uh, uh, see what they say. I mean, it's interesting for you as well as a startup. What do they think about your product? It's not a retailer, it's not a custom, it's not a friend, it's not, it's not family. It's just somebody said, right. okay, what is this? What can we do with that? So basically, now you have the distribution network set up, you know, you're available in the, in the major stores in, in Germany, for example. And now you also are responsible for creating the pull that yes. people actually go to the stores and buy it. Right. And that's, that's my, your next focus. Genau. That's my responsibility. 
definitely. It is my responsibility because if the client not, not, not if they don't buy my product in the store, mm -hmm. they won't order anymore. So of course, then it will be a short lived success. Yes. Yeah. And now looking back to the past, what marketing channels have already worked well for you despite the challenges and the PR that you generated through through those challenges and competitions? Um, Social media works quite well. I do have a few influencers. They ask for samples as well, right. and that works perfect. Mm -hmm. And this is a quite nice community because, yeah, it works. So social media, of course, like Facebook and Instagram, and then all the newspaper articles. Okay. Newspapers. Print. Um, Print is quite good. Okay. Still quite good. Yeah. And on which of these channels do you actually spend money yourself? I mean, for social media, for example, you can pay ads. Yeah, I do. And no ads, no. But I, no, I don't pay for the ads. Mm -hmm. No. Uh -uh. What I do is like, uh, okay, if I have a nice video on something like that, sure. and I put, put out, yeah, but then I pay a little bit. And um, newspapers. Do you place actively paid ads there, or is it also more PR? I didn't. I paid once for a newsletter in an organic something newspaper. Mm -hmm. All the rest, no, I didn't pay for it. And for the influencers? No, not yet. Okay. Never. I paid. Of course, I had a. I had here for the for the Shark Tank and my German Innovation Award. I had a a, a, a PR. Uh, agent who helped me out. I okay. mean, I paid her, of course, right. but really for the for the newspaper articles or something, I, I, I never paid yet. But I will. I would. I guess I would now. Like okay. if you go not for a newspaper, but if you go for uh, for for I don't know for uh, Bunte or whatever. So like right. I would I I would pay for it. Yes. Okay. And now is the right time because you are available in many stores, and before that wouldn't have been the case. Is that why you would be able to, or willing to pay money now? Or Yes, because now the time is right. right. I mean, for me, it was important that, first of all, yeah, that's, that's, I, I need to have some income. I mean, if, if I would have the, the cash flow, the, the, the budget, mm -hmm. uh, I, I would have to do more marketing. That's why I'm doing these, these contest stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. this, is, now this is perfect. And you meet a lot of startups. And this works quite well. Right. Yeah. So basically, if I understood that correctly, you're just hacking your way through PR, <laughs> through marketing that doesn't really cost you any money except time, your time right? that you invest there. And at the same time, you first focused on building the distribution network to bring yes. your product to many, many stores. And now you're slightly switching and sort of readjusting the focus to paid marketing. Yes. Was there any certain... Um, let's say, like limit or red line that you crossed in terms of revenue or income, where you say now is the right time to actually shift the gear or the focus from hacking my way of doing marketing to paid marketing? No, I mean, I realize that I have to push my marketing now. Okay. I mean, I'm really out now in the market. I mean, I have to do something. Mm -hmm. It's not done with a little, I don't know, a little newspaper article. Uh, right. it really, I have to push my marketing now, mm -hmm. definitely. I mean, that I can see. And what role does uh, your own online shop, for example, uh, play in that regard? I mean, your most important sales channel is basically the, the distributors that you work with. Yes, it's not my online shop. I do have an online shop because I have to have an online shop. Sure. Uh, and it's nice. It's it's okay. I mean, but but it's not my focus. I don't wanna. I wanna do the own shipment and all that stuff. Yeah. The idea is really. I mean, I have a product. I have to sell loads of them. Yes, because it's like eight uh, francs yeah. ninety, right? Yeah, loads of them. So that means I need the major retailers. Yeah, that makes definitely. Sense. Wonderful. Is there anything that you would like to add that we have not talked about yet in terms of marketing and sales for your product? No, I think we have everything. We have all the... No, I'm fine. It's good. I, I really like your story because I think it's it shows you tried different things. You sort of hacked your way with a certain bold attitude that you just said, 
let's just go out there and do it. I don't yeah, take no for an right, answer. Yes, yeah. And then you ended up in, in the good position that you are right now, where you're actually able to shift the gears to more uh, a paid marketing uh, activity and sort of get to the next growth level and even expand to the States. Yeah, it's interesting because it's learning by doing. I mean, as you see how how it works and how it goes and um, you have everyday challenges and um, yeah, just go for it. Just do it. That's what you said. Just, yeah, go out and do it. Just don't think about it even. I mean, you, ha you have to know what you do, but of just course. do it. Yeah. And also, I mean, you, you have a, a product that you started out of your own problem. Yes. You wanted to find a solution for it. So you were really driven of making that happen. And then everything else about business, about doing sales, negotiation and so on, you just learned on the side by just doing, testing things out. And you could always figure out a way to get that stuff done, even accounting and bookkeeping that you do yeah, yourself. My father said that at the beginning, he always said, it's always better if you do the things for your own, just to see how right. it works. And and he's right. And it's the same thing with the, with the distribution. I mean, what I, what I found, I found out that I'm more successful when I'm selling my product for my own mm -hmm. directly. Because, okay, who can, sell, who can sell my product? Like, I mean, with the convention and, and, and with the passion I'm doing. I mean, this is really, if I, if I have a, a distribution, a distributor, it's like, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm a twist out. This is product number, I don't know. Sure. And no, if, if you do it directly, it's totally different, yeah. totally. But also a, a certain limit to scaling the whole thing because you cannot That's the point. Yeah. just multiply your time yeah. or your appearances just by that. That's why I have to change, yeah. Makes sense. So we are very curious to see what new marketing campaigns and ideas <laughs> that you will launch in the future. In order to conclude the episode today, I prepared some rapid fire questions for you. Okay. So the way that that works is I give you a choice of two or three uh, statements, nouns that you can choose from. And you just choose one and quickly explain in a sentence why you basically made that choice. Okay. That's Are you ready? Right. Yeah. So the first one is Germany or Switzerland? I know that's a mean question to ask you. Oh yeah, you. this is a very mean question. <laughs> I go for Germany. Why Germany? Germany is the better market for me. I think that's a very good reason. <gasps> employed or self-employed? I think that's an easy one for you. No, no, not really. No, 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 no. Employed or self-employed? It's it's only important that you what you you have to love what you do. If you're employed or self-employed, it doesn't matter at all. This is my opinion. So that can also change over time. Sure. Makes sense. Next one, motivation or discipline? Motivation. Why that? You have to motivate. Motivation, it's, it's, it's all about. It's, about. it's about what I said before. It's the passion. It's the convention. It's, it's, that's what, 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 what motivates. Just believe in yourself. Uh, uh, yeah. Believe in yourself. Motivate yourself. Even and you need the motivation from your own side because you have a lot of doubters out there. Right. Yeah. One that you might change because you started as a solo founder. So the next choice is solo founder or multiple founder team. I'm actually a team player. Mm -hmm. I miss having a team. Okay. I do. Yeah. Is that something that you would do differently in retrospect? Maybe I'm, um, you know, your your good friend that you mentioned in the first episode. Maybe she would have been a a good co-founder. Maybe yes, but you know, when I was start, I, mean, I I started the company without knowing what happened. Yeah. No clue. <laughs> Maybe you know. I mean, how can I? But she would be the one I want to have her in my company. Right. Because she's working and she loves my twist art, and this is the point. She's a good one. I want to have her in my company, but she knows that. That's why we have already the second desk. So um, I'm actually, yeah, I, I miss having somebody next to me. 
Mm-hmm. I miss that, just that somebody, we had it a lot in the castle. So when you really, when you're just overworked and a lot to do, just uh, that you have someone say, okay, come on, let's rock it, we do it. And, uh, and um, yeah, I, want, I would love to have somebody next to me, yeah. That makes sense. And the last question for today, financial wealth or happiness or both? What was the question? <laughs> financial wealth. Like ah, yeah, yeah. Having a, a big bank account, happiness or both? Both wouldn't be bad, but I would go for happiness first, I guess. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I love to, I, I, I need to have a security, yeah? Mm-hmm. It's not, what, what, what is the financial wealth? I mean, is it that you can pay your bills or that you can spend the money like hell? No, 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 mm-hmm. happiness. So happiness, but you should have a, a certain kind of, yeah, level just to say, okay, I can pay my bills and if something happened, I'm, I'm just, yeah. And beyond that, pursue your own happiness. Yeah. Makes sense. But you happiness don't. is very important. Of course. Thank you so much for taking the time. It was a real pleasure talking to you and hearing your inspirational story and the hacks how you built a successful bootstrap company. All the best for the future. And we look forward to hear more from you and Twist Out. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me, Sevan. I would like to introduce you to SBB Startup. If you think that your company is a good fit for the Swiss Railways, get in touch with them or learn more about their startup programs at sbbstartup.com. Thank you very much for listening to today's episode. We hope you liked the content. And if you did, please rate us on Apple Podcast. We would highly appreciate that. Next week, we'll already be back with a new episode, a Q&A session. Check out our social media channels for handing in your questions to the topic that we will discuss next week and get them answered by top experts out of our network. If you have a burning question, that's the time to ask it and get it answered from professionals. So we hope to see you again next week for an all-new Swisspreneur episode.